We are here to be connected. That's what gives our lives purpose and meaning. I was uh, raised in rural Idaho and uh, we had this old horse way back to Pinto. So I mean, my older brother, who was really creative and imaginative, um, we'd ride around on that horse and we'd pretend to be Paul Revere. You know, the British are coming. But when John was in eighth grade and I was in seventh grade, uh, he started losing weight. Uh, had really bad stomach pain. And the doctors uh, told us it was Burkitt's lymphoma, which is really serious. And he was admitted to the hospital, and I think he always knew he wasn't going to live. But he did what he did, right? He told stories and made people laugh. And uh, he didn't respond to any of the treatments. And at the very end, they brought him out of the ICU um, so that he could be with me. I was his only sibling, and children weren't allowed in the ICU back then. And on the last day of his life, he sent me out to get banana popsicles, our absolute favorite food in the world. And I realize now that he wanted me to feel like I was doing something useful. And he, you know, didn't want me to see anything that would scare me. But he distinctly said goodbye, Susie. I never wanted to accept my brother's death. I didn't like that. No, I didn't want that. But you have to sit with that. It's there. It's terrible. Then you have to start a new life. And that is a task. It's a job. You have to get up every day. Unpleasant. It's work. And then you have to figure out where that loss fits in your life. How do you make enduring connection with that person who is gone? Bring them back to life. How are they in your life in a new way? I'm a doctor in palliative care, which is focused on improving end of life care. And in this work, I keep John alive. My patients that have died, I keep them alive. I honor them. I honor me. History isn't over, right? <laughs>